Well, summer is still very much with us, so this week we've got an out-and-about theme to our programme. We start off with the beautifully sun-drenched island of Wahiki, where the Clifftop Sculpture Exhibition has been taking place. Geraldine Ramirez reports on the headlands. Nature and art hand in hand. A pack of cards standing strong against the clifftop winds. Giant sized Lego. An abandoned car. All part of Waiheke Island's prestigious outdoor sculpture exhibition, Headland Sculpture on the Gulf. This biannual event has been running for 10 years and has established an esteemed reputation for producing exciting and stimulating art. Many stepped up and attempted the challenge this year and 39 talented artists made the cut. It's a very exciting day for Timothy Sang. This is his first exhibition and at 12 years old he's one of the youngest artists to have ever been chosen to be part of the event. His fascination with Lego and video games inspired him to create this two metre high game man. I was just messing around with some Lego bricks and just decided to make one of this and then decided to enter into this competition and I'm, a, I'm really surprised that it got in. Timothy's design was sent off to the fabricator's Acrofab, where a two metre high replica was made for the exhibition. When we were trying out, you know, the process of how to make it, it was going to be out of um, stainless steel, and then it was out of timber, and then we came upon um, plastic, which is the perspex that it's made out of now, and it was just perfect, you know, because Lego is very, very plastic. And everybody recognised it as Lego immediately, which is really good. But the um, selectors were saying that they selected on the value of the image we have supplied them. And then they looked at, you know, the name and then they were really surprised at the age. And so, that, you know, we were very proud. Waiheke local Kazu Nagakawa also accepted the challenge. Although these umbrellas may look out of place on this hot summer's day, they are in fact some of the 200 umbrellas that make up Kazu's very conceptual idea. What I wanted really is this shade. This is already in the shade, but what I really wanted to make a shade and have a safety, kind of a safety place for yourself, for individual. Everybody has to carry to make my work happen. What was the story about it? Sorry. It's called on Dante, which means to move slowly. Oh, and well, as you move slowly good. around the sculptures, you're obviously becoming part of sculpture on the golf yourself. I use this word, andante, and this is a quotation from the dictionary. And I wanted to enhance this phonetic sign of andante. So you can relate this. label to the shade that you are carrying. The one thing that distinguishes Kazu from the rest of the artists in this exhibition is the way that he's approached this landscape and the idea of the exhibition itself. Other artists tend to see it again as an exhibiting space with a three-dimensional work placed in the landscape. He's taken a new approach. He's turned the focus away from the landscape and the idea of an art just being looked at towards the public and that's where his work resides this time within the public and how they engage with this landscape. It's amazing diversity of sculpture out here and a perfect place. Yeah, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, brollies too, we're part of it. It's fantastic, good opportunity to get out and see some amazing yeah, artworks as well at the same time. Super interesting. A lot, of them, a lot of them seem inspired by sustainability, yeah. which is quite interesting. Yeah. yeah I wish I could purchase one for my garden, but <laughs> it's a little out of my price range. But yeah, no, it's cool so far. Kazu moved to New Zealand from Tokyo 24 years ago. He quickly found his haven on Waiheke Island. He raised his children here and set up a studio. The island itself has become an essential part of his creative process. Oh, well, the Wahiki, yeah, this island, I think this is very important because it's so isolated that gave me a 
time and space that I can think how I、uh, see the things, how I think. A local documentary maker was inspired by his story and his connection to the island. He works just with traditional Japanese hand tools when he's carving, so he has a really meditative process where the actual process of his working embodies the kind of meaning of the work. And、um, I just love the way that it, it, you know, it's influenced by his Japanese heritage, but also by his approach to this country and how he feels about the land and things that he never really experienced living in a concrete jungle in Tokyo. The piece Kazu has found on this beautiful island is what has inspired all his works, which today he can proudly see dotted along the headlands. <laughs>